Okay, thank you, Dimitris, for implementation. And okay, let's um, take a look at the flight convolution. This is the uh, completely different um, type of convolution operation. Okay, and so far we um, we were dealing with two-dimensional convolution, and in so the convolution operation itself was in two dimension, um, performed convolved over all input channels. That means the, our kernels were convolved on uh, volume on tensors, and and this um, this approach lets us to mix channels like uh, we have volume and we. Uh, convolve the, another volume over this volume and get the another volume that means tensor. Uh, but in in case of uh, depthwise convolution, uh, we uh, instead of convolving over a volume, we uh, convolve the kernels over two-dimensional uh, special tensor. And the approach is uh, first you have the input tensor of three dimension and you split the uh, tensor into multiple channels. Um, and for each channel, uh, you apply two-dimensional uh, kernels, convol convolutions, and then stack, stack again uh, to, to construct your three-dimensional tensor. So here you have like, uh, let's assume the first convolution layer, uh, since you can assume this as an image, red and green and blue channels. And the first, in the first step, you have to split this uh, input tensor. This is actually an image. And uh, you split the image into different color channels, red, green, and blue. And you would have the number of uh, three different kernels. Uh, so in standard convolution, you, would, you, will, you also have three kernels, three number of kernels with the same um, number of channels with input tensor, right? But here we split the kernels into three different uh, channels here and convolve each uh, kernel over this uh, two-dimensional image and get the convolved feature map here. So for each, for each channel, you, you would have a, um, separate feature maps. And at the end, you, you, you want to um, construct your three-dimensional tensors after uh, separately convolving each kernel over uh, each independent channels. And you just uh, like concatenate in channel dimension. So this is how the flies convolution works. Uh, okay. Um, so basically, uh, what we have done is uh, we split the input tensor into multiple channels and apply each kernel over each channel, and uh, we constructed the output tensor. And for for doing this step, this here, we uh, it's called filtering, uh, it's like uh, as convolution operations is doing, and this, as this step is called combining step, uh, like uh, we have. Um, three-dimensional uh, three tensor here, and we want to combine each uh, channels into, uh, it's shown here as one channel, but you can you can construct like n number of channels after, from these three number of channels. Uh, here's the, again, uh, let's uh, analyze some computation numbers. Um, so that bias convolution um, is, um, has less number of operations. And uh, basically, um, let's assume if you have input tensor of this dimension, this size, and you want to get this uh, size of tensor at the output. And the first thing, uh, in original convolution, you, you, you would convolve this um, five by five by three kernels over this special dimension and you want 256 number of channels at the output, and you would have one around 1 million computations in standard convolution. Uh, but if you split each channel uh, into uh, multiple 
and split the tensor to multiple channels, uh, you can apply uh, five by five convolution. And here you, you would have only one channel since you already um, yeah, split it into different channels. And you want three number of channels here. Uh, this is this one. And you have only uh, around 4,000 4, computations here. And in combining step, and uh, so you want, in, so in this step, uh, your input and output tensor would have exactly the same number of channels, right? But in CNS, you want to uh, increase or decrease your number of channels um, <coughs> while propagating the information into deeper layers. And so you, 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 you want to change these three channels into N channel. It may be one, two, or 10, what else? Uh, for example, in the case, if you have, if you want to have 256 dimensions, you, in combining step, you can just apply one by one convolution over over this over this one over this tensor, and you will end up with uh, around 50,000 computations here. That means you can compare this one and this one. Uh, I mean, this total number of computations and this total number of computations. And the number of uh, multiplication, that means number of computations is uh, around 23 times less than the uh, standard convolution. So this is uh, mainly about decreasing number of computations. And we are going to see the mobile net in this next slide. The main idea is to uh, decrease number of computations so that we can run our deep learning models on embedded devices because you, your phone or your, you, any embedded device, just, it may be Jetson or FPGA, uh, you want to make less computation as much as possible. Um, yeah, because the convolution operation is very power hungry uh, operation. And if you decrease the number of computations, number of uh, multiplication or addition, uh, it's always better to uh, run your network on embedded devices. So this is the uh, mobile net, which, uh, which its name is also mentioning. It's, it's about running your networks in mobile devices. And, okay, their main contribution is using the twice separable convolution, as we uh, told in previous slide. And they also uh, propose two different parameters and the shrinking parameters, which is the first one is width multiplier. This is the parameter uh, that you help you to control number of channels in your network. For example, uh, your mm, so original mobile net has let's say n number of channels in each uh, in one layer, for example. Uh, by adjusting this alpha parameter, you can like if alpha is zero point five, uh, your number of channels would be n. And over two. And the another multi, uh, parameter is resolution multiplier that, that is the uh, controlling the input image or uh, intermediate feature map uh, special resolution. And here's the results of uh, different um, parameters. So as you can so the first the first numbers here on the left uh, defines the width multiplier. This is alpha. The one is the keep keep the number of channels at the, as the same uh, and decrease the number of channels gradually. And this second numbers are about um, resolution, in your input image resolution. So uh, the, the best performing one is the, of course, as you guessed, the first one. Uh, and here they analyze the input image resolution it's again the best performing one is the uh, one that have higher resolution input image. So this is how uh, the device convolution looks like. Um, and this is the one by one convolution. Um, so th this was the filtering step and this was the combining step. This was uh, splitting the into different channels and applying convolution and here you uh, combine again construct another three channel 
uh, three dimensional tensors. So this is the main idea of mobile net. Uh, so using the pairwise convolution to decrease the number of computations and also use one by one convolution to um, construct another tensor from your uh, output of the output of the device convolution. Uh, of course, um, so since you decrease the number of computations, of course you, you would lose some accuracy at the end. Uh, so mobile net is not so accurate as the um, another standard convolution neural networks, um, but still um, the the final performance is comparable with the, with the previous one. But the main thing is you mostly decrease the number of computations and you can run this on your mobile mobile devices or any embedded devices. So this is about uh, mobile net. Do you have any questions? 